80s, I started to recognize that if we put a new system in the woods, the first year was always the best. We'd make a lot of sap that first season. We could make a lot of mistakes and still make a lot of sap. In year two, three, and four, we saw less production. As we got into really high vacuum, we saw less difference, but there still was a difference. And I started to recognize that it was the drop line that's the issue. So I told people, I said, you know, if we really wanted to make money, we'd change our drop lines every year. And everybody laughed at me. We later discovered it isn't the entire drop line that we need to change. It's just the spelt tip, the part that touches the tree. And so various spelts have been created, and I've used them all. One thing about me, I always research things. I'm never happy with the status quo, always looking for something a little different, a little better. So we went through the stainless spelts first, the micro spelts, uh, I don't know if you remember the micro spelts, but it was a tiny stainless steel spelt. We drilled about an eighth inch diameter hole, and it was advertised to be the greatest thing ever to come into the maple world. Turned out to be one of the biggest flops of the maple world. It just didn't work. Um, various size diameters have been used. The old spelt we used to use was 7 16 We then dropped down to 1964 and saw an increase in production with a smaller hole that defied everything that you could ever think of. Why would you get more sack out of a smaller hole? But it's mainly because we seal the hole better. That spelt seals against the wood better and we get a better spelt to tree seal. Now what happens when we leak air past the spelt to tree seal? Thoughts. I'm trying to keep you guys awake a bit. I know we fed you too good. What happens to the tree? Why does it dry out? Where's the bacteria coming from? Air. Air? What else do we need to go with the bacteria? Sugar. Sugar? Okay, what else? Wart. Wart. And last one? Oxygen. Oxygen. Yeah. All these things couple together to create a bacterial factory. And uh, so if we can get rid of the air and get a good seal between the spout and the tree, that eliminates a lot of the catalyst for this bacterial reaction to happen. So we found that the stainless spouts really sealed good. I was impressed with them. You set them once, start of the season, they stayed the whole season. Okay, now I'm going to move on. The next ones were nylon plastic and polycarbonate, uh, various designs to fit stubby adapters, to fit over spouts you already had, or to fit directly on the tubing. This one fits directly on the drop line, like so. It's replaceable easily every year by just pulling it off, putting the new one on when you tap. Uh, we found that these polycarbonate spouts sealed in the tree just like the old stainless spouts did. You put them in once, they stay. Nylon spouts is flexible. They grow, they shrink. Air temperature changes will cause them to grow and shrink. The change in the wood from being wet after rain to being dry when it bakes in the sun uh, changes that spout to tree seal. And uh, so the nylon spout wasn't the best thing to use. We find that these are very good spout tree seal. The other thing we found is that because they're clear, they don't draw a lot of heat from the sun. We don't, somebody mentioned heat. We don't want heat to be in the tap hole at all. So a black spout, not the best thing. Originally, spouts were made black for longevity reasons, to make them totally opaque to uh, ultraviolet light. And so, we're going to use it one year. We don't care about longevity. We want it to last the one year. Um, so, now, being a clear spell, very little heat going in that tap hole. Our production season, our last boil date this year was the 28th of April. I know we're a little further north than here, but I want you to know we had some black spouts in the woods. To be honest, 
I found the best spout that I used was the stubby reducer the polycarbonate tip. Um, it was easy for me to tap. My wrists aren't as good as they used to be. I have carpal tunnel syndrome pretty bad. Shoving tubing onto spouts all day is hard on my wrists. But the stubbies were really easy for me to use. They stayed put. We had very little trouble. They're our best producing big woods. Uh, this thing on the little 230 tap woods was our best individual woods. But at, from our rest of our production woods, uh, the stubbies and tips were the best. Um, so I like those real well. But the, the 90 degree is what we used in the rest of everything. And uh, they did very, very well. This year was a hard year because we had a lot of hard freeze in the middle of the season. It would warm up enough with the sun that the trees would start to thaw out, put a little liquid sap in the drop line, and then 10 minutes later it froze up. And that heavy freeze thaw action pushed drop lines apart, even pulling a drop line off the tee. I've never seen that before, but it happened to us this year. In some cases, we had the drop line itself laying on the ground, spelt still in the tree, tee at the tree. I wouldn't think that could ever happen, but it did. Um, you know, maybe three or four trees the whole season, but that's how bad the freezing thawing was. Uh, by the way, when you tap, I don't like to see a U-loop in a drop line. Somehow use up the material, lower the lateral line down, whatever you need to do so that it's a steady downhill gradient from the spout to the tee. No uphill to it. That's a cesspool bacteria trap. Uh, they are so that you'll have sap set in there overnight, every night. Teas. If you take a nylon tee, and just rotate it between your finger and thumb, like so. On any plastic fitting, you're going to feel a little ridge come around there, especially on the tip of the barb. That's what we call casting flash in a foundry. Uh, it's where the two halves of the mold separate. And uh, with nylon, it's really prevalent that that casting flash is there. And that's, each one is a potential vacuum leak. These polycarbonate tees are designed to have less casting flash, so less leak for each. This is what I call a monobar tee. I don't know what you guys up north call it. It's one bar. You old guys will remember when tees had to have at least three bars and four was better, but it wasn't. The two bar tees we've been using now for 20 years are excellent. Uh, tubing doesn't come off. But a monobar tee inserts so much easier when you're putting drop lines in. We really like them. And that's what we used in our 230 tap section that just got installed. Nothing came apart. It was a good install. This one has a pin on it that will accept a 516 spout, a stubby spout, and drop line itself. So three separate plugs. So this one pretty much can replace any key you've ever used, uh, regardless of what you want to do to wash. This little device is uh, a slide fitting, and uh, it works really excellent on, uh, I had my glasses on, I could see to do it. Uh, it's not just my wrists that are a problem now. Ruth would tell you there's a lot of things that are a problem now, but uh, she's not here, so we're not going to talk about that. So, this slide fitting is a, attached by a string, but you put the tubing in and slide it together and then hook on the wire of your main line and you're locked into the main line. Now, I leave a foot extra to come around to the main line saddle. We have been using connected with a hook, and that works great too. Uh, we now have a polycarbonate connector with a hook. Uh, so if you're not going to use these, that's what I'd recommend. <laughs>